I think has just re um, reinvigorated the strength of this champion. The response from Odo is going to be his Jace. Uh, he's a player that has a very long history behind him, uh, alongside Wonder of about course. Peach level 4. Going to be able to steal the Raptors here, knowing that he does have Pryo in the mid lane. Jackie's into this Annie. We did talk about this. This is in the vicinity. They have a ward on it as well. Don't really want to try and smite fight Arel. He goes in. Peach doesn't get it, but Hignar does somehow. Yankos will be happy that they got lucky. Remember, if they win this, they are locked into our top eight, into our playoffs. Hook's going to land from Trimby. Puts the ignite down on Patrick. Lightning crash as well from Flacker. Ignar flashes. Battle dances away. Level six for Flacker, though, means that he's very willing to flash forward further as Patrick falls low. Ignar can block these, but he decides against it. And now Ignar's hooked under the tower. There's two for Flackhead. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Wonder was looking for the dive with Yankos. There's the shadowing strike, and Wonder will fall. Odo takes the kill. Okay, so a lot of action happening across the map. A straight up 2v2 kill for Flackhead and Trimby in the bot lane. I mean, that just goes to show the strength of Nautilus as a champion, right? Just does so much in the early laning phase. Yankos, you need to calm yeah, down, sir. Answer. Yankos doesn't have flash here. A couple of autos will be enough as Peach takes it. Okay, so very good solo coup jungler right now. But yeah, it looks like it is going to be six. Drops over to Heretics and to Yankos. The reset from the Giant X bot lane with Ignar now opening through mid. He'll path down towards the bottom side to get some vision around this dragon, most likely. Now. The good a little bit more security if they want to step into the jungle. Trimby coming across. No lightning crash on Flack and no flash on him either. The dredge line rip tide combination. There's the quickness though as Trimby is locked up. Does still have the flash. Depth charge on the back line as Jackie's gets knocked up, but Trimby falls first. Flacker dances away across the wall. The chase comes in from Odo Omne as he TP in behind. And there goes the kill. Jackie's taking out. Without his team, leaves him open for being caught out of position. And then. Flacker just was not expecting this flank to come through. Wonder being given. Chris has gone it pretty low, but Giant X is here to contest. Analyst just said they didn't like the fact that Giant X were just being cameramen. Well, here the cameramen want a piece of the action. It's like the office all over again as the hook does go down onto Peach. There's a chain of corruption as well. Peach stunned up. Feromancy tries to dash away. Chased down by Wonder. There's a CC from Ignar, but Peach will be forfeit. They steal away the Rift Held, but they do lose the fives. But if they can't close that gap and Giant X can leverage their range, then I think that there's a very... Yes, look at Wonder as well. He's going to get a, a pincer movement here as Yankos and Wonder, like the claws of a crab, will begin to descend. Very powerful force. And Zyru now sets forward. Yankos gets onto the back line. There's the sun. There's the CC. And Jackie's is deleted. Magnusor coming out as well as Yankos falls. But this is where Flacker can really open up. He's only got 300 health left, though, as Odo Omne snipes out Trimby. Ignar, Patrick, and Odo Omne now on the, the dragon with Peach. Wonder tries to do what he can. The Void Rush not enough to escape the clutches of Odo. And even though Heretics found a pretty good engagement. The Vault Breaker. And Odo Omne is using this time to push in the bot lane and take Giant X's second tower. Too hard to make compositions that aren't simple in draft sometimes. A lot of weight on Patrick's shoulders here. The weight is spread a little bit more evenly. Odo Omne getting ahead. Jackie's been minutes in this game. Well, they were even from what I recall. Yeah, I just want to, because they have 100% win rate when they were ahead at 15 minutes. So the game may have already at been 15, finished. At 15, it was a win, But with it, 17 seconds on the Drake, they're now setting up around it. Peach trying to collapse in. Yank is going to catch him out for the moment, but Peach pretty tanky. Damage already onto Zviro though, as Trimby steps forward. There's the dredge line. Wonder going in with the bow. Flacker going in as well. Ignar dives onto the back line with a quickness, and Giant X are just looking for the disengage, but look at the poke. Trimby's already a third HP. Flacker trying to do everything he can just to get those autos down, but Jack is, Jackie's kills off Trimby, and now Wonder is running for the hills. Giant X continue to collapse. They got one kill. That's all they needed to secure themselves the soul. Will Yankos look for the steal, or will he accept that this dragon is gone? Another demonstration of great patience and control from Giant X. They played around their vision very well. They played more of a front-to-back style. Their tanks weathered the most on the other side of the wall. Now it's Viro who's in danger. Peach coming across the wall, so is Ignar. The chase continues. Zviro, no flash. Burns it in the previous engagement, and Zviro is down. Peach takes it. The Baron of possibility. More darkness. Yeah, but remember, he was, he's spotted by Wonder as well with the, the tremor sets, That's right? True. So they always know where Ignar is until Wonder unbows. They look for Odo Omne first. Wonder comes out. Trimby as well. The Void Rush in by Wonder, trying to get onto that back line, but Ignar's still very, very safe. And now Peach tanks up Wonder for a while. Flacker trying to get away from this. Ignar dives in. 
And Flackhead is buried in the dirt. Wonder follows him. Easy to get caught into the chaos of these fights, get drawn into going into a brawl, but you can see the community. Oh, his fire is going to get caught again. Has no flash, has the Tibbers. Focus Resolve doesn't quite land at the end of it. Odo comes across for a bit of an accelerated shock blast. And Giant X now looks too well for him. <laughs> Yankos is waiting in that bush to see perhaps if Giant X overstep. Ignar gets a zombie ward by clearing out that bit of vision, and Yankos now steps forward. It's a nice flank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that joke. <laughs> now, tower gonna drop. Wonder getting chipped away. How Ooh, tanky are you, Wonder? Hits. Wonder's gonna get rooted up with a focus resolve as well. Not tanky enough, it seems, as Patrick goes on a rampage. Trimby tries to dive in, but all of the diving he's doing is underneath the surface. Taken out by Giant X. Two quick kills for them. Can a minion here? They can tank that tower for a little while at least. The tower should fall. Survival down to half HP from an accelerated shot blast. No minion waves in top and bot for them, though, means that it will only be the one wave push, the one lane push at least, for Giant X. Very well played. I mean, what else is there to say? I am. And Giant X denying Heretic's entrance into the jungle. Heretics have no vision on this side of the map, apart from that provided to them by their minions. Oh, Trimby. They can oh. see a little bit of Trimby. Whoa, okay, he goes in. The quickness landing on Survivor as well. Charm onto Yankos will force him away. There's another. Zoda secures the kill. The teddy bear left without an Annie to hug to sleep at night. Smyro has gone for the long sleep. <laughs> Annie's story is really dark. Remember when that they released is. that cinematic? Giant X, they're looking to secure their third win of the week. They're looking to lock in playoffs as they see the Nexus in their eyes. A Cinderella story for them to come back and secure their own spot in the playoffs. Wonder and Flackhead try to do anything, but the challenge is denied by Giant X. It's impossible. Wonder goes back in, lands the knocker, but he's stunned. Void Rush trying to get out to the back of it. Cease and desist the one to Odo Omne means that they can begin to open up, but they just don't have any damage. One does a tank, Yankos has a sundered sky for all that's helping as he goes down. Sent to join his friends in the sky, it seems, as Giant X in convincing fashion will lock their spot in spring playoffs. Cool, calm, collected faces on the side of Giant X. My expectation. And Cassante going to round out the draft for Irrelevant. We know that he's a very good Cassante player. We saw it in playoffs last year when they had that very epic bout against Fnatic. Mm -hmm. And he's on play, for those that cared. <laughs> I mean, people do care, buddy. Oh, hang on. Mid gank. Misky. Rooted with the focus resolve. There's a Spectral more follow-up stun. Niski flashes away, but the flash chase for Marcoon will be enough. Didn't get it, because I was like DOS that I didn't think that was going to hit. But uh, I think also it looks Deceptively long because Zoli's got one up for his team. They have their eyes on top lane. Rogue pinging. <laughs> <laughs> Isma looking for the seal here. Marcoon backs away. Isma can get the smite, but Marcoon gets it instead. And now Isma is going to be collapsed on Zoelis coming across. Isma flashes. Zoelis lands it. It's a great example, Benny, of Lonnie popping onto Isma as he's caught across the wall. The bailout comes down onto him and he comes back to life. Dust kills off Zoelis and Isma's able to survive. And I'm a little bit angry at myself for using <laughs> the meme graphics during this fight because SK get two. Grub's going to be started off. The Draven being as strong as he is is scary. It's You look at the gold difference, pretty much exactly the amount of gold that he earned in that last fight. Grab himself the Sheen as well. Irrelevant hovering around. Don't think he's going to be able to contest these. Dragon spawns in a minute and a half. They've got enough time to go and contest the Drake if they want. Comp he's going to be denied a little bit as Isma steals away the Raptors. Bot side of the map, though. Oh, Exa, oh. no flash. He will have the bailout here, but will it be enough? Hostile takeover comes in and Markun dodges over it. Exa just a little greedy in his positioning, and Zoelis punishes him for it. Now the collapse is going to start from SK. Isma behind the wall here is Markun on the Draven. Good heartbreaker across. Isma goes in. Crescent Guard, there's the TP in by Larson, and Isma will fall as well. SK just donate themselves into the fight. But the spiraling despair is enough to catch one. Zoelis falls. Especially when you have a comp that can pick out and isolate an individual member. It's so much easier for a Viego to get resets, and that's too much damage to that top lane tank. They've been caught out here. Let's see how much Marcoon can do. Irrelevant gets up towards the wall. Has the all out. Path Maker tries to all out. Wonder out, but it's killed by Marcoon. Could just be a Rift Hell drive by here. I love Rift Hell drive bys. It's not going to beat. Marcoon has the hard breaker. Flash Spectral more. Doesn't even need. Makes it look easy. Well played there from Larson. 
In a two versus one, he is forced to flash away. The mid tower is, sorry, the bot tower is going to drop in favor of SK. But you help for two yeah, you definitely yeah. do. Why not? You know you have the tempo advantage. Three members bot side. Ride that in. You could probably get a second charge off, with, I with think. With six mites, I think you just kill this tower. Yeah, you do. Melt for it. Six grubs. The more grubs you have, the more mites spawn out of the rift held. You could look for an extra charge or ride I it in. I mean, the thing that confused me was that clock. Clomp. <laughs> Clomp. <laughs> Actually stayed top, then yep. moved into the river, and then moved back, back to top. Again, yeah. I thought that they had decided at this point that they were going to cross. And he shouldn't be in any danger. He's moving down to the river. He's now going to move his pressure over to mid so that he can catch that wave. Keep and the Kraken Slayer thing coming across as well. The control ward goes down. Irrelevant now is going to try and check it, but he doesn't have a ward. He's hooked in, and this is all they really wanted out of it. Pull the Cassante in, pull anyone in. Hostile takeover. Not quite going to connect as Markoon. Still on the Baron. Finn on the front line. Still has the explosive cast. Markoon pops a heartbreaker there to get out of the Cassante. And now with 3000 HP, there's the explosive cast. Doesn't hit Isma. Isma can still look for the steal, but can't find a way. Looking very hungrily at that 7 and 2 scoreline. Markoon, start Markoon starting up the dragon. We'll be able to get it. Irrelevant still just stepping forward here. Comp Sonic's dash away. Irrelevant continues to chase forward. Pathmaker out, looking for at least a slow here. Pops the all out on Comp. Fate's call will bring Zoelise back, and Irrelevant just sprinted at them. And uh, here comes Gragas. Yeah, I've seen more effective sprints on a school sports day. The continuation of Rogue. Like, SK were just all at odds and ends. They were all over the place after Irrelevant to chase down Comp, and Rogue very happily accepted the, the free gift of the kills there. I mean, poor coordination from SK to force that fight. They, it looked desperate. Irrelevant just sprinting at Looked the AD carry. Already. And uh, Rogue just, they shut him down and they collapse on the fight. They're going to unlock this base 23 and a half minutes in. I mean, the thing Rogue with that fight as well is, like, you're against six grubs, you're against the Baron push. Do you need to invest that much, SK? Because now you're going to lose double inhibitors off it. Maybe you could have held back, tried to just clear out and only lost an inhib or so. Rogue just entirely breaking. Larson, death cap very close, but I don't think he's going to have time to finish it. Comp with the ulti. Cool. It's more just to force SK back. Now clearing out the wave, Rogue will likely join him as this next wave crashes towards that tower. No fates call for them. A little while makes it a tiny bit trickier, but when you're 9,000 gold ahead, things aren't really too difficult. Oh. As the hook lands onto Isma, he uses the Crescent oh. Guard, then he's knocked back with the explosive cask. And the displacement from Rogue's comp is absolutely devastating. Markoon was hit with the hostile takeover, but this takeover not working as intended. They don't need to base here. They can just keep the pressure up. Look at all these super minions and the poke. They're still very healthy on the side of Rogue. TP to the minions here to try and make them invulnerable so that they can tank those super minions a little bit longer from Irrelevant. It does that and another hook. The golden hand of God from Zoelise this game. He has not missed. Him and Maradona have a thing in common, it seems, is it is Zoelise's hand that has sent SK packing. They do still have a chance at playoffs, but it is likely they will have to play a tiebreaker game at least. Rogue keeping their destiny in their own hands as they lock up Exekick once again. And Rogue, for the first time this year, have beaten a team not named Carmine Core or G2. They did it in clean fashion as well, a 27-minute victory. ...to get out on the map first, but I still think you've got a great answer here as Fnatic. Did Mirwin just pick the most vanilla ice cream R5 top laner? Possibly really not so well, <laughs> right? And that's tricky, and it's not Aftershock either. Uh, does have a lot of natural resistances, is a good flick back. But an excellent charm for Frescao, you're going to on the setup. Will he commit for the Flash Shattering Strike? Humanoid looks like he's just going to try to play for the wave, accepting his fate. Around, and Humanoid really can't trade back there. Nice little okay from the Ramus. Ayoye's coming in from the bottom side here, though. <clears throat> Will be spotted, so Humanoid has to back away. But means Void Group's going to be... Quite just getting so many little advantages. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about, is like, I think Ryzar kind of needs to play either through mid a little bit more, or have... Or actually just like all in on the bot side. And nothing's gonna happen here. Waiting for the Q3. Mirwin trying to sidestep. Looks like the play is going to fizzle. Nice bit of damage coming in from Frescao. He's trying to back away. Pull back. Good under Razork. Ulti now coming in. That's the Magnetic Storm. Joy looking for a bit more damage. Elio still healing up for a moment longer. Frescao finding the initial kill. Reset's now coming in. Bailout not quite there. Razork able to get the return kill, but the charm back is now coming in. But do they have the damage? Red buff ticking. Nice sidestep from Frescao. 
Doesn't have the... Oh my oh, gosh, so oh, 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 incredibly close. I thought for sure maybe a flash auto, but he doesn't want to risk it. He doesn't want to risk dying under tower. Instead, happy to just have the pressure and very likely the tower plate. Very good call from Madeline's Koi, though. Attack Fnatic before they make it down to the bottom side of the map. They find the 3v3 with the roam. Perfect timing from Alvaro. And even though they don't get the bailout on the yet, they still come out on top now. Fnatic, I want to try and turn it around. Flash in. Zenith Blade now following up. Hostile takeover is there, but Razor going to turn right back onto Alvaro. Find the initial kill. First guy was here, double buff there. But Fnatic. as well. They're able to get numbers advantage here for the Void Grub. So it will be then a split onto the Void Grub's three for three, but ends a match here. So MDK, if they TP in for Scout, which they are, they can contest. And advantage. But the dragon already gone. Everyone needs to run forward. Ram stands can't just be unstoppable, but he doesn't use it in time. The activation. Oh, yeah, now trying to keep them all in the midst. Four members stacked up. Lightning crash there, but Super's caught in the wall. He can't get over. Frescali off to the side. The charm now going into it. Connects with the Volbear. Gets the reset. Humanoid trying to lay down a bit more damage, which is Frescali standing behind him and Mad Lions. Koi taking two out in the process. The follow up dive. One more dash available for Frescali. The wave about to collapse. Noah and Jun doing everything they can to defend the tower. Frescali goes a little bit too soon, though. He doesn't need to make that play. Noah now trying to back away. Ultra Shock Laser goes in. Noah getting chipped down, crashed down, not quite there. Cleanse all the out to safety, but MDK still playing damn clean. Oscar trying to free fire back on the top side of the map, but it is not going to go in his favor. MDK with a massive play. Beautiful punish from Madlines Koi. The second they see Oscar in having TP back to the top side, they're like, we can get numbers advantage. We can collapse on this. And Oyoya, that engage was picture perfect perfect to set up for your team. Definitely was. Oscar finally going to knock down the last plate here, but it is not going to make the difference in the overall gold lead. 425 to him. Still a 2k goal. Go. Good, good, good enough. Good. Problem. <laughs> no, you can't type. Don't try. It won't let you. It wants you to draw circles exclusively. Jun, that is not where you will find safety or peace. He did not learn his lesson on the bottom tower. MBK are more than happy to oblige him and teach him a second time here, as Mirwin is also getting the top tower. How did this go so wrong? We were so busy talking about how <laughs> it Ooh. Feels bad. Shield the Dame Rick, not gonna connect there. Supa walking forward, finally takes mid lane tower. See, you're not allowed in this jungle right now because of how much MDK control, and with the amount of money or investment on the bottom side. Needs to run. Mirwin debating, the flick back, Ooh. still good, no! A moment of overconfidence sees a bear again, and Humanoid gets the kill. Mirwin. I think the mistake here was Ryzark going for red buff. I think he should have reset and actually tried to get out onto the map again. So they, and even the Madeline's Koi, they're faking the dragon. They're going to go for Humanoid. He's no flash. Humanoid caught on the side. A bit of vengeance after the last play. Mirwin should have enough damage to finish this off, and if he does it, Super more than certainly will. You assume the dragon is going to be where Madeline's Koi go for next, but they're kind of like, here, look, let's be real. An Ocean Soul isn't really our win condition here, but for Scary getting caught. Razork Thundering Smash goes in. Noah leaps out. Frascowie, my god, the flash into the alt. Spirit Rush takes him to safety. Noah dangerously close to killing him. One more item, one more dagger, one more longsword. Probably would have done it. But now Jun? the Herald charging, spinning, 360-ing. It's a little bit confusing now as the Leona finally going to get into the midst of the fight. Hostile takeover is there. Mirwin now needs to find his way to the backside. Noah going to go down. MDK still trying to take over. Supa still standing. Crucially, that is one mega fed Zeri, but they can't finish off Oscar. Time, yes, they can! Supa still alive! It's not even a bailout. He's just immortal. It's a quadra for the Zeri. Mirwin still stepping forward. Humanoid's got no business being here. Mad Lions coil like Lions of Bond Prey. It's a penta for Supa. What a fight. A penta per split is needed for Supa. And he movements. And then find that success in the mid game. Not overextend on side lanes. Not get caught out mispositioning. But every single time for that. But MDK for now are just running the rift. Fnatic are just trying to play off side lanes. They're saying, hey, look, screw this. We can't really fight. We can't really go anywhere near MDK. So maybe you can try and pressure into top side. You can see both jungling support there to support Humanoid. But now everyone's got to try to time. Frescali also not committing to the objective. Fnatic, I think, recognize that this is happening and instead just go for tier two. Recall's coming out. Mirwin can try to contest and the rest of the side of MDK now retreating, but they're going to knock a tier two down of their own. Exactly, and this is why I like the call from MDK. It's like, hey, we can go for both. Wave was already there in top side, so you get the threat in the tier two, and you still got the TP on Mirman to try and come in if anything does go a little bit awry. So tier three, oh, oh my god. Full committing for the play. Humanoid's already used all of his CC. Jun tries to throw down the solar flare, and Humanoid's just going to drop. 
Supa now legendary. The tower will fall. The wave set up in mid lane as well. It's well, a Junior. master class. Mirren's chasing the members of Kaui. They're not going to get a chance to recall either. Where was this mid game? The entire split. MDK with a lead. Unrelenting pressure in the mid lane. Pressure on the top side of the map. They knock down half of that health bar in the inhibitor tower. They take their first inhibitor within a minute of knocking down the big purple worm. They're already into Fnatic's base. This is incredible. I mean, Mirren chasing both Razorak and Oscar in and back, so they can't reset. Numbers advantage for MDK. Two inhibitors down. Mad Lions. Over walls flashing over um, the reverse crowd control that can come in, but Fnatic trying to poke out Mirren. They've already got control on bot side. This is going to be so difficult to try and keep off of your turret here. You still got 45 seconds left on this barn buff. Guy Splitter, Supa does get locked up though, but immediately cleanses out to safety. The Hostile Takeover buying all the space the Zeri needs. Lightning cr cutting through the back line of Fnatic. Human right now backing away. Noah's got nowhere else to go. A killer instinct. More like an instinct of desperation. Kills now coming through. Freskawi, godlike. I expected a close match. I was ready for Fnatic to slaughter. I was not ready for this level of dominance for Mad Lions, Koi. What a clean way to end the regular season. Supa now going in for just a little bit extra. The charm gonna connect. They don't have the damage to kill off Oscar, but they'll take their time on this one. They know they've done well. They've earned their moment of glory. And they've earned their spot in playoffs. Madlines Koi will take it to four and five. Impressive stuff from start to finish. They'll finally hit the Nexus. You can see the smile on Supa's face. You can obviously knock her up on the Zenith Blade in, but instead the Rakan, the lovers duo, uh, you know, and historically, this has always been considered a pretty big skill matchup. Yeah. Rakan can outplay, but Leona certainly has an easier time getting value in the lane. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Uh-oh. G2 early game, question mark. Root now landing, Hansama locked up, but Yike there just in time, and now it's Hillisang who's been caught out! He tries to dash, he tries to flash up to safety, but the timing just not quite there. Hey, look, you're gonna have to reset again, Yike, to come up topside. I've got some time to do these white grubs, but... Yike may even forego more of his camps. May just look immediately topside. I was saying level three roam. Setup here is a bit risky because Daglas isn't too far off. They really need to be able to burst Photon down. He already queued forward though. That might just be the death sentence. The flash out to safety. Still the Spectral Maw connects from Yike, but he's only level four. Jace just trying to dance on him with the Hyper. Daglas now coming in. Yike has to be very careful. Photon if he swans back to Hammer Stance. That's going to be one dead. Viego, there's the first. Broken Blade's got nowhere to go. No passive. Over aggressive from G2 and Photon's more than happy to oblige them with a quick death. Well, there's going to be more. Pull this. back the fall. <laughs> it's just a solo. That is a generous assist, League of Legends. Oh, their cooldowns, and in the extended trade, Broken Blade's out of spells. I don't even know if you get out of that with more than one for one. Hansama now forced to flash cleanse. Vicky trying to back away, but we talked about this with Leona. Footwork is okay, but he's still just eating autos for free. Yike now on the way in. Another Spectral Mod to try to find the stun, but Hillisang there to body block his Daglas. Steps out with the crash down. Vicky retreating, trying to get back under his tower, but the flash to follow up is there from Hillisang. Might want to keep the play going on to Yike. Yike retreating. Going back to the tier two. Hunt. Find a lot of these plays. No. Yeah. And definitely has just been shadowing laners who have been outplaying, right? Vichu exactly. essentially got a solo kill mid lane. Uh, Photon, G2 kind of going back to what is comfortable for them. Trying to set up for more of these early games. Excellent sidestep from VTO. Hex flash forward. Unstoppable is Yike, though. Fantastic use of the Heartbreaker, but he's the one leaving Heartbroken. His caps is now no in mother. trouble. There's the Fed, Jace! Photon, he can do it! I think it. it's more panic, to be honest, from G2, where it's trying to salvage the plays as you overextend, and here we go, Mickey goes in, but Karzy, he's fine. Karzy's having a fine time. Hansama boots two, is still gonna get knocked up. Daglas can now follow. More CC, and there's nowhere for the Callista to go. Vitality are obliterating G2 Esports. Fnatic are sitting, living pretty, knowing they're essentially guaranteed at this point. Top two, the Ignite ticking, and again, the Leona goes in well, but she does not go out. Karzy on a killing spree. And the Fnatic fans in the corner are getting left. We're really shutting down that Smolder, not giving it the chance to scale, even if that game did get certainly messy at a certain uh, at a couple points. But now the commitment onto VTO. G2 trying to push it back. The pullback on the caps under tower is clutch. VTO still ticking the flash, the full commit from Yak. They desperately need this kill. And Viego will secure it. G2 for Vitality and a minute until Dragon. But might have taken a little bit of time. G2, I don't think they want to try and contest, but they are in the area. Well, Caps already TP to the bot lane. VTO still has his TP, so this is. Not really the play that G2 are looking for unless Vitality overcommit. Vitality have the setup. Caps first on the wave in bot lane, and Hillisang has to be careful about stepping too far forward. Damage now onto Photon. Big wave there. Mickey X 
And Broken Blade should have enough damage to finish off the Jace, but Photon still going in. The Eclipse, not enough. The Ignite ticking. The Jace will fall. Broken Blade getting a bit of vengeance on the top side with support from Mike off to the side. But with Daglas and Hillisang here to cover with Karzi having Cleanse and Ulti available, there is no getting onto this Zaya. And they can lean into bot side as well. Caps is too low, has no team. A little bit more control again on the map. Vitality has to be feeling good. They've gotten every objective in the game. First, he's really not sure. So has to give the benefit of the doubt to the side of Vitality. It also becomes very difficult to use this Rift Herald now as G2, because how do you try to remain unconcerned? Faith in their ability not to give the 50-50. Charm connecting a bit of poke on the Vitality, but the Dragon is theirs. You can see Hillisang wants to make a play. This man is not happy with a single objective, and I think it's going to cost him his life. Beautiful Zenith Blade comes in, and actually it's going to cost Daglas as G2. Fish for the angle and find the kill. You already got the dragon, you greedy goose. Why are you going back for more? And it's VTO who's going to pay the price. Hillisang's hubris. Leverage, beautiful, tricky one. Again, G2 not ahead by any means, but that play is big for getting the gold a little bit closer. Two items now for Cap. Still only about one and a half for Han Sama. We'll see when he recalls it. He loves fighting. It's in his bones. It's like Conor McGregor in trash talk. He just has to do it. Now Hillisang goes, he finds the two-man. The immediate follow-up isn't there. Caps on touch on the backside, but Vitality already, already got the pick. Good play. Now the tier one has fallen on the top side. Vitality again, they've got the vision control over oh. the Baron, but they want more picks. Yike in trouble now, CC there, pull back there. Yike trying to get a safety heartbreaker, not enough. And Hillisang, the two-man knockup. He wants more, and he just keeps going. They finally managed to get that play to work. Incredible stuff. And I'll never get tired of it. I'll just say it again. Yeah, a lot of throws this particular season. But now Broken Blade going for the engage. VTO fishing for the side set. Flash out from Karzi giving that respect. Pull back onto Broken Blade. Passive going down. Broken Blade should just die here. The question is Vitality. Do they want to keep this fight going or be happy with the single pick? G2. Looking down to bot side, he'll still be good 4v4. And Hilly is even trying to find the flank his own. He has ultimate. He's stepping back into the rest of his team. Hansama off to the side, but Hillisang wants to keep it. Hansama still untouched. Caps untouched, but the TP now coming in. Hillisang strong. Yike trying to back away. Pullback is there. Photon doing good damage to Jace. Just tearing through G2. But now the turn. They're trying to bring it back. Caps one more dash to finish off Photon. He gets one back. Double kill for the Jace. Daglas wants to finish off Yari, but he knows he doesn't have enough in the tank. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the push already coming through. Karzi still alive. It's a chaotic fight, but it is still the push in favor of Vitality. Daglas is keeping Caps engaged. It means that at least Karzi and Hilly can get the wave to get the tower. Video shifts the bot side to collect that as well. So even though the fight looked a little a little bit funky, it's still only Photon going down for Hans and Mickey, and you're getting so much more for Vitality yeah. on top side. They push in a bot. We're back to Dragon though, and people are cost. Break back. Crab has been now picked up. BTO is the charm follow up there. They don't quite have the angle. Let's bounce coming from Broken Blade, but he's so damn squishy. I come to the side, cannot do anything. Feathers have flown. Cars, he could be vulnerable, but they're just too far ahead in the fight. Vitality again, playing it so cleanly. BTO stops the pick from coming through. The setup onto the Drake is theirs. Hillisang moments away from the ultimate now coming back. Yike burning, ticking, wants desperately to get the reset, but he can't do it! Caps now, three stacks left on the dash, but he's only going to be able to run back to base. The Q flash, the shattering strike from Daglas. Shattering hopes of G2 to be in the top two, pushing them down. Fnatic fans elated. Fnatic will be in sole possession of first place. After this win from Vitality, one last desperate stand. G2, can they bring it back? The answer is hell no. VTO eyes on the Nexus. He's not interested in playing for kills. He turns his attention away, but his confidence in the final moments from Vitality. They lock in top two. They lock Fnatic in a long crash or set up vision for him and that kind of stuff, right? So I think this is where we will see a lot more attention of up towards getting that control for the Jason, that top side, especially against the Olaf. Like, that's perfect for you. That's not a big win, though, for Targamus, who I might have to hold off, because... Cheo with the setup, the follow is there, the knockback from Sagan, the flash out to Sagan, the little close against it! First blood for BDS. Whoa. Careful even being here. Good damage coming in. Relentless force there, as well as the denting blows, but now, Nuke first on the roam. Bo? Bo has to be careful, flash out. Now going through, Vault Breaker there, he does not want to hit on the Nuke. Cheo now flash got safety, but it's Nuke who's in trouble, the flick back is clean. Sonic Wave is there, but Cheo does not want to take it, KC. Finally. Mid lane, when you hit that level six, but I think the flash might just be up before you can really get that uh, opportunity to play towards that as well. So I imagine instead we might actually try and see him. But well, honestly, I was gonna, 
was going to say bot, but you don't really have a huge amount of pressure on bot side. And even if you try and go top, Adam just presses or and the, the gank's dead, right? Yeah. So I think it is a case of try and play for some sort of timer here on towards nuke, or at least like get a push in mid, where Saken can then use his own ult to help you and support you if you go and play for a different side lane. LeBron roaming up, not spotted, but pings are out at least a little bit. Bo will clear out the grubs. If either of those skills are connected, that might have been a very different story, but luckily Shao gets hit by neither. Bo is still six. going in. Smite is there. Nuke is six, but Bo manages to get away. Nuke hitting absolutely nobody, but Bo still getting cut down here. Sagan doesn't have the follow up damage. It's over aggressive from the side of KC. None of the abilities from either side are landing. And that's just making it easy for Shao to play this one out. Nuke still just on the chase. Sagan going up top side, but Kabo hasn't even moved yet. Yeah, Kabo. Kind of Dragon Ball Z, you know, where you're like, you spend two hours just charging. Getting ready and, and charging it, up. And someone and then knocks it aside and exactly. like hits the wall. Yeah. Oh, Targamus. And it must be tough. It must be frustrating to spear a bomb and then whiff. Targamus. Not even going to get the chance to spear a bomb. Picked off by the just side. Caught him. I have no idea what he was doing. Well, I think he just assumed that there was a recall there. I wasn't entirely sure where people were positioned on the map. Bo going to be forced to ult to try to mitigate the upfront. CC unraveled Earth. Kickback is good. Follow up is there. But Shao put himself in no man's land. It will not matter. However, BDS still so far ahead. And then when he dies, Bo goes, you know what? That looked like a great idea. Now Targamus goes, let me show you how it's really done, mate. And yep. then goes in again for a third and then time. Goes in. And he's going to die. Don't succeed, try, yeah. try again. Back to the grave. More games, but that little sliver of hope starts to grow into something bigger. But when you fumble like this and you make mistakes, when top lane, which has been doing well, is about to get completely deleted, hope starts to fade away. Adam grabbing a kill. This is just gone from bad to worse for KC. Here comes Mom. But uh, Saken? On the way down, trying to knock up Ice. Knockback flashed away from Ice. Still alive for a brief moment. Threaded volley. Shut down there for Saken. The start. Of All right. Here we are, set up on the Drake. Clean comes in. Kickback is there. But will give his life, but the dragon is gone. Something at set least up. small. They're ready to collapse, and there's not a lot of counterplay when there's this much CC and an Olaf pack and Ragnarok. Oh, Capital Shard walks in. Devastating. Shattering Strike connects as well. Shea, Ward hop forward, kick back. Are they going to get the kill to Adam? Taking their time. Nope. Shea on a killing spree. That was Stride Breaker. Stride Breaker, thank there you. you. It's <laughs> completed for Adam. So if Spinning he gets onto things. any of these side laners, if you have to chase them down with the slow and that ghost as well. So we become the top side. KC okay, assuming BDS are going to try and play for a dragon, but should spot a Shao here and know that the jig is up. Targamus backing off, Ghost popped, Alti can get popped as well as soon as the CC comes in. Targamus very likely dead. The wall certainly would be good against Olaf if he was on the right side of it. The knockback is there, the ulti fades away. Bo's got nothing left in the tank, but Shao offering an opportunity for him to get out to safety. Ball breaker might just be enough with the stride breaker there from Adam. And nothing's going to break. If there happens to be an Olaf in the brush, your man advantage suddenly means very little, especially when Olaf is this fed. But that's the thing, right? I think when we came into this game, we we're like, cool, how is Bo going to look in the buy? What's he going to be able to do? Because realistically, it had to be play for lanes, but it was more lanes playing for Bo. And without him able to capitalize on Nuke having no summoner spells available. That off. Should be able to back away, yeah. Instead, potential play on the top side here. Targavis, Shadow, and Cabo. Bo there as well. Just trying to push this wave in. Tangle bar. Does he have numbers? Deleted. Ball breaker forward, now gonna go on to the nuke, but he's on the wrong side of the wall. Flip back is good though, finally the CC layered! It looks like a good start to things, but Ice ulting, and now he's just gonna try to clean up the fight. Unbreakable, protecting Saken, upset, standing behind. Mom up and available, when is it gonna get called in? Ice skating forward. Do they wanna step up, or are they happy with what they have so far? Sonic Wave connects, resonating strike, will it be there? Unbreakable to block Ice from following up any further, the problem may have overstepped here. They're shredding him down, KC found the angle, Adam's finally here. But the play's already fizzled. The TP out from Cabo. He knows he's dead. If he doesn't just make it to safety, he doesn't have enough time. He's grinding. Passive income. He's been awake since 3 a.m. Yeah, that's the secret. Oh, that's a surprise, Olaf. That's not the bush he wanted to go into, but we'll die. Ice on a rampage. I would... Sigma male. <laughs> he's on his grind set. He's unstoppable. They let him into his zone, Rob. That's the one rule. Don't let him into his zone. And now they're in the Baron zone. And BDS gonna be very, very happy about this. Still, a lot of members of KC try to collapse here. Shale is not here. Just to be very clear, no jungler in the vicinity, and we're still going hard on this. Shale coming from behind. KC see a window of opportunity. Five seconds on Bo. He won't be able to get there, but maybe they can find an angle into the pit. Shale finally gonna make it over the wall. There's no way. 
Baron will drop, and now KC are in a bit of a difficult position. That acceleration gate not going to quite hit Targamas. Flick back is good on the lower bra. Some nice poke damage. Him just showing up here is causing issues already. All right, TP onto the bottom side. Another pick onto Bo. If the first don't succeed, try, try again. But this tribush has been the death of KC. Labrov zoning KC off the back here. Cabo still trying to push in on top. So numbers advantage once again here for BDS on this bottom side of the map. Shale going to shove in mid. As BDS going to link up with him now in the mid lane. Targamas, you need to be very careful here. Chadrang Psych doesn't connect. Saken doing his best to clear the waves. An uproar from the KC fans. Or to leverage that strength. And he can't even bring mom to college. And that's the problem. <laughs> Adam, he's just so strong. And he's just going to continue to push that mid. And now BDS. I right, started so going to top side again. I just don't think you have the presence on the map right now. Cabo and Saken linked up on that bottom side to get the tower, but that just overexposes you on this bottom side of the map. Or right, the top side of the map. And Wave. But of course, they know Adam doesn't have TP. KC moving in for the play. Ice clearing out mid wave. KC with first setup. They've got their flanks covered as well, but Adam with flash and ghost up. Nuke wasn't spot on the ward. It's actually been blocked out by a control ward. So Nuke trying to see if he can move into position here. Adam, Adam over the wall. They recognize the wolf now. Upset retreating. The Drake taken. No one objective bounty. Cabo manages to take the Drake. And now there's an Olaf trying to tear his way through the backside. The execute isn't enough. Upset cannot get into the fight. He needs to flap onto somebody. He needs to do anything. But he's been isolated. He's been pushed back. The miracle steal is not enough. The kickback from Shao is clean. It's a triple from Cabo. They look to finish the job right here. It started all right, but BDS not going to go home empty-handed. But KC will find themselves going home exactly that. Nothing to pick up as BDS will trump them in their place and deny them that spot in playoffs. Domination just about from start to finish. One or two tiny glimmers in the early game, but it's just gone from bad to worse. For the second split in the row, KC will finish 2-7. SK and Rogue will play our only tiebreaker, and BDS will end their season 5-4. and four. A very key. the last pick yeah. will be. So Gnar locked in up against the Cassante. It will be the Camille support. Very feast or famine. But despite that pressure, Doss looked pretty good. Looked pretty happy coming on to stage. So a bit of optimism for me. This could be where it either works out well or the game ends right now for SK. This is risky. This is the dive that could define their season. Where is it going to go? Doss burning, ticking the ignite already there. He's getting out to safety. The ignite still burning. Doss might just drop the hook now oh. going in. SK have fumbled the bag. And it is a dragon, but it's traded for grubs. Uh, you're fine with that as rogue, though. I mean, realistically, you're not trying to play for any to try and go for that right now. Doss at least protecting Niski. Feels like they've just kind of abandoned bot side. Doss not going to be able to input buff for the hook shot. Rogue are the ones who set the trap. Rogue are the ones in 30 seconds if they're not just going to kill X-Kick. Larson's grabbing a plate. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Smolder's continuing to push in, continuing to stack, might get a plate of his own. And what is another rotation of grubs really worth in the context of this game? That's two plates for Larson. Things are going to bad for Morse incredibly quickly. It might not look like it now. Yes, it's only a 1K gold lead, but the scaling for free, the poke that SK could bring to the table in theory isn't going to mean like Rogue are willing to concede this one. Two drakes to SK, perhaps an avenue to come back here. Maokai all big. Markun will get rooted. Com Huge amount of vision on the bot side to spot out if Finn does start to TP. Terror will fall just to the minion wave. But this... Terror's going to fall as gone. well. Alti goes in. Nice sidestep. TP coming in. SK looking to bet it all here, hoping this is their opportunity to turn it back around. But xk has got no alt. And Markun's looking to punish. He does have a flash over Relent now stepping in. Rogue has to be careful about moving into this choke. Wall up there. Relevant flash up. Looking for the angle on Gnar. They the focus for Rogue. Harold invested as well. You can see Com starting to lean up towards that top side. Is Finn going to move over to mid to cover there as well? So we'll have a slight numbers advantage here on top side for Rogue. And that's why Isma has to flash away from that hook. This is really powerful. It started to fade away. It can still be a massive threat in terms of CC as Comp and Rogue group is four. Niski will get the top lane tower. SK, does just, give us, just give us. You get the tower. Dots you don't need the out. dragon. You've already got two. SK, I don't think you commit for this. He's Bit of a spectator objective here. Zizma just going to try to 50-50, hoping for the third Drake. They're spending a lot of time, but at least they're ensuring that they can stop Rogue recalls. They got the TP out from Comp. Alti in now. The Smolder cannot come from the fight. The knockback is there. The Crescent Guard. Arella needs to knock two on the wall. They might have found the angle. Their dragon's already down, but Rogue now starting to fall. Two members picked up. SK patient.
vision on the play. The TP from Niski. You can see Marcoon as well setting up vision. Gets the Scuttle Crab, getting some of the pink ward in the uh, top side of the river. Relevant, just continuing to hit the tower here. Focused on the objective, about to go Mega. Niski waiting in the darkness. Finn goes for the pullback. Finn goes for the all out. Relevant holding, waiting for the TP to complete. Niski needs to back up though. He's about to get rooted down. He goes to the tower, just desperately wants to finish it. Goes for the full committal here as Finn just backs away from the Gnar. Relevant goes over the wall. He gets one, but now Doss is on the way in and Larson needs to run. That's Hexhack ultimatum. Larson caught up. Rogue are here for the turn again. SKF just overcommitted, and Rogue are there to punish. Double kill for the small. Yes, Com can do a lot of damage, but they do need to wait up. So Elise, Spot Tisma, this may be an overextension, though. Niski here, too. So Elise, Celestial Opposition, and Aftershock fading away. That should just be a dead Nautilus. Overconfidence and now irrelevant here. This could be big. The punish massive as irrelevant has already moved down. Larson not gonna be able to get away from this one. There's just too much CC. All of Rogue running, and this is their chance because while Rogue are slow on the Baron, SK will tear through it with the power of that Kaisa. Way, way too far for Zoe Elise. They didn't have that mid lane turret down. No one could link up with him. And immediately SK realized a great TP from irrelevant to shut out Larson as well. And that's Baron given across a massive upset for Zoe Elise. I'd always love to be pushing towers, but know that this is their one guaranteed window of strength. Again, pushing into towers against a smolder is difficult because you're just giving him free stacks if you do not. Huge event gained for SK in the grand scheme of things. But you buy more time to get to third items. Pen is starting to come through. Components there and the Blightning Jewel, as well as the Last Whisper on the side of SK and still bowling in on the top side. Has the Black Cleaver as well has just been running top lane. 2.6k individual gold lead, no doubt the hero of this game. The good moments from SK to bring themselves back, but around like Not a huge amount of hope to done, there. but so Comp has to be careful about stepping this far in. Instantly, the Nard is going to knock him into the wall. The wall already and available. It's just 100 to zero. Might as well be a burst mage. The shield does not matter. They're going to get one back. Irrelevant now going to be in trouble, but they can't burn him down. SK, they smell blood in the water. They need to go. The Mantra Qs from Larson are massive to the Soul Flare. The first one to get connect wants to get another. He's hitting so many targets. He just keeps firing them out, but the wave is here. SK, objective in their sights is the Baron phase. They will take the tier two. Finn went over the wall and Irrelevant didn't, so shout out to our observers there. You can see they don't know Irrelevant will pop up every so often, but is Irrelevant coming behind? Because Ism is already in a position, and Irrelevant is going directly towards comp. Hook now coming in, or Alti now coming in. Zoli's trying to make it out safety. Irrelevant off to the side. Larson TPing into the midst of the fight, but there's not a lot to grab. The kill already down. Irrelevant finding one. Doss wants to keep it going. Execute immediately onto the backside, and they're tearing through Rogue. Larson holding on. Finn holding on. Can they make it happen? Pulled back onto the tower. Larson taken out. It is Finn versus the world. Irrelevant says not. Today, an entire season of despair, of throws. It almost fell apart for SK, but in the moment where it mattered most, they go for the throw. They find the end, and SK Gaming are going to playoffs. There's woes, there's throws, but at the end of the day, there's still POs for SK. An incredible comeback 